working us through one of the incredible applications of graphene-based materials in cancer therapy. So as we all know, cancer is one of the leading causes of death globally. And according to statistics, every three minutes, one patient dies from cancer. And although we've come up with revolutionary ways in trying to address the problem of cancer using small molecules, one of the challenges we face with conventional therapy is the fact that the drugs could actually be killing the patients. Come with me, I'll explain it to you. So guys, unfortunately with conventional therapy, the drugs are not able to differentiate between a cancer cell and a normal cell. And so in the process of trying to kill the cancer cell, they end up also killing the normal cell, resulting in toxic and debilitating effects on the patient. Now, this is why scientists have come up with the interesting concept of what we call smart drug delivery systems. Now, I know when you hear of this, like, wow, drug delivery systems that are smart, come with me. I'll explain it to you. So, guys, what are smart drug delivery systems? Now, this is smart materials that are able to specifically target the cancer cell. And they are only able to release their drugs within the environment of the cancer cell, thus protecting the healthy cells. Well, how do they work? Come on. So, within every cancer cell, there is what we call receptors. Now, these are almost like GPS targeting signals in the cancer cells. These smart materials are incorporated with biomolecules that could specifically target the cancer cell. Additionally, the smart materials have a way in which they are only able to release their drugs within the internal environment of the cancer cell or upon external stimulation, either by light, radiation, or electricity. Now, you ask me, where does graphene come into play? Come with me, I'll show you. Hi guys. So, as we all know, graphene-based materials possesses a lot of incredible and unique properties such as great mechanical stability, a very large surface area, good electrical and thermal conductivity. Well, scientists have looked at these properties of graphene and seen that they could actually work great as smart drug delivery systems. How is that? Well, because of the really large surface area of graphene, a lot of biomolecules such as drugs and those targeting ligands for cancer cells could be incorporated in the matrix of graphene. Therefore, it's able to deliver a large amount of drugs while also targeting a lot of cancer cells. Hi guys, so graphene has the ability to absorb light radiations and convert it into thermal energy. Now, using this process, drugs that are attached to the graphene surface can be released upon stimulation by near-infrared radiation. So how does this work? Take a look at this. So using near-infrared radiation, scientists could actually find the cancer cell. And so the drugs are going to be released only within the environment of the cancer cell, thus protecting the healthy cells. And so guys, the next time you hear about graphene-based materials and their applications in biomedical sciences, I want you to remember two words, smart materials. And honestly, guys, a lot of work still has to be done in terms of clinical studies and the interaction of graphene-based materials and humans. But really, guys, the results are promising. And hopefully we can come to a time where our cancer patients don't have to suffer debilitating side effects of current medications. Thank you for listening. Have a lovely time. One of the pro major problems today is disease related to aging. As our population ages, these diseases become more prevalent and more problematic. One of these is macular degeneration, where the photosensitive cells in the back of your eye begin to degrade and die. While this may not cause blindness, it does cause visual impairment, which is problematic for day-to-day -day life. Let's take Jerry, for example. While the cells in the back of his eye may have died and degraded, the link between his eye 
and his brain is still intact. And this presents an opportunity. Now, in the back of your eyes, you have two types of visual cells. You have rods and you have cones, because one looks like a rod and one looks like a cone. We are very simplistic in biology. And rods are more for detecting light levels and are very sensitive. And cones are more for color or sunshine and rainbows, if you prefer. Now, as you get older, these start to degrade and sometimes they die or kick the bucket. And then this causes problems for your vision. These light sensitive cells, they detect the light or the color and then they send inputs through your optic nerves into your brain, where the brain then takes this information, processes it, mixes it in with your other senses, such as your mouth, your nose, your skin, and then it decides to do whatever it wants to do with this information. But then if your eyes are not working effectively, then you can't see properly. This is a problem for old age. But this is where graphene can come in. Because with graphene's unique electrical properties, we can use it to replace the rods and cone cells. Because thankfully, in most macular degeneration, the optic nerve is still intact, which means with some clever science that is still being worked out at the moment, graphene can be used to directly replace and then the stimulation from the graphene implants can be used to send the signal down through the optic nerve. Although this is some way away, it does hold good potential. So now we've cured Jerry of his macular degeneration and he can see rather well now. But now we have a new problem. He's broken his bones. But we have a solution for that as well. So we have a broken bone. Now, under normal circumstances, most bones heal on their own in a very strong and happy manner. However, in some cases, whether it be through disease or being a very serious and extensive injury, bones may not regrow properly or not at all. And this is where a artificial matrix can come in to help promote the proper regrowth of a bone. And this is encompassed in a field called tissue engineering. For bone growth, graphene and its derivatives do hold potential where a graphene-based mesh can be inserted into the bone to assist in the regrowth of the cells. This is to enable and sustain the correct and optimal growth of the stem cells and bone-related cells. It's to enable the correct differentiation of the cells to ensure strong and healthy bone. And it enables us to control how the bone is growing to again enable the strongest bone that we can possibly achieve. So this matrix will allow the cells to correctly adhere to it and the surface properties of this matrix will allow correct growth, control the growth, control how we want it to grow. And then the two ends of the bones will meet up through the matrix, which will be incorporated. And then we have a complete and healthy bone. And this makes for a very happy Jerry. So now Jerry is cured, his vision is back, his bones are strong again, all thanks to graphene implants. Now while these implants are not exciting and is nowhere near the world of cyberpunk just yet, that is still a long way away, it does hold amazing potential for the future of medicine. And even then, graphene based implants could bring about truly wearable technology and i'm not referring to the type like an eye watch i mean truly wearable and that is an exciting future and now for something completely different in addition to all of these cool applications graphene is also really conductive but also very flexible so this is really really great for making sensors electrodes have been used to record the action potential of neurons for brain disorders such as epilepsy or parkinson's so electrodes for this are typically placed either on top of the brain, on the scalp, but even better recording is obtained when the electrodes are actually inside the brain. Typically, these electrodes are metal-based and therefore quite rigid. What happens to the brain with metal electrodes? Let me show you. Okay, so here's a short demonstration. So we have a metal knife representing the rigid metal electrode, foil representing the graphene flexible electrode, and jelly, mimicking the brain. So let's start with a flexible electrode. 
So when we put the flexible electrode in, shake the electrode or shake the brain, not much happens. But when we replace it by the rigid electrode, what happens? Well, as I shake the electrode, this is happening. The brain is really damaged. Of course, in real life, the electrodes inserted in the brain would be much smaller, doing a lot less damage, but this is still showing that rigid electrodes are not ideal. The flexibility of graphene is not the only advantage. Having these graphene electrodes mean you can have much denser electrode arrays, and so that means much better resolution. In addition to this, the advantage of graphene is that you can not only record the action potential, but you can also stimulate the neurons. Stimulating misbehaving neurons with adapted potentials means that it will ease the symptoms of diseases such as Parkinson's or epilepsy. 2D based material sensors are also used for diabetes in two ways. The first one, which is quite well known, is for glucose sensors, but another one, which is a lot less known, is for foot ulcer monitoring. How does that work? Well, basically, having lots of sensors, heat sensors or pressure sensors, into the insole of your shoes and it's just going to record the feet temperature as you walk, as you go about with your day. And this gives you precious information before the foot ulcers happen. When foot ulcers get really bad, it can even lead to amputation. So it's really a great advantage to be able to monitor and treat it if the need arises. Graphene can also be incorporated in sleep masks um, as eye trackers. Or it can also be used to record your heart rate as you go about your day. Here's a short video explaining you how it works. So I'm going to talk to you about how graphene textiles can be used to capture the electrophysiological signals in our body. So electrophysiological signals include things such as ECG, which we can use to extract our heart rate, EEG, which we can use to measure our brain activity, EMG, which we can use to measure muscle movements, and EOG, which we can use to measure eye movements. So what I'm going to demonstrate here is some graphene that has been directly printed on top of a cotton textile substrate that can be used to capture an ECG or a heart rate signal. So you might be familiar with an ECG. They're commonly taken in hospitals and um, they involve placing these sticky electrodes directly onto your chest and connecting to large bulky uh, electrophysiological equipment and measuring the health of your heart as well as your heart rate and get, making an assessment of your um, general fitness. So instead of using these electrodes, which are quite uncomfortable, they're rigid and they dry out over time, so they only can work for short periods of a few hours to multiple days, we're going to see if we can capture an ECG using this graphene that has a much better long-term performance than these electrodes and is much more comfortable to wear and is flexible and conforms to the contours of our body. So if I place my fingers on these electrodes here, we'll see in a minute on the screen that uh, the activity from my heart will be captured we should be able to see large peaks in the signal which correspond to the heartbeats or the electrical activity from my heart. So each of these large peaks is known as the R peak, which is the large beat we get from the heart. And we can also see extra uh, morphological features of the ECG, such as the P and the T waves. And these features can be analyzed by a clinician to determine the health of your heart. So if we take the location of each of these heartbeats, we can then extract the heart rate of a person and get an assessment of the level of activity they're doing and how healthy they are, as well as features such as how stressed they are and their general well-being. So you're probably familiar with this from other wearable devices, such as on the Fitbit, where you can measure, where it gives you a measurement of your heart rate continuously. However, this only gives you a measurement of your heart rate itself. You don't get all the detail that you're getting in this waveform here. So because this graphing can be printed directly onto textile materials, it's much more comfortable than these rigid electrodes. We can scrunch it up like this and then bring it back again and it's still gonna work just as well as it did before. And we can also print directly onto the textiles that we're gonna wear, such as this t-shirt here, which shows how we printed graphene electrodes um, directly on top of it and the user can then wear this t-shirt and these electrodes are touching against the heart and then we can get a continual recording of our heart rate as we go about you know, our daily activities, as we do exercise, as we walk around. If we're always wearing the t-shirt, then we're always having our heart rate monitored rather than having to put on con um, conventional rigid electrodes. And that's not all that graphene can do. From its very high conductivity, graphene can also be used for viral sensors, which is really needed right now, to bandages for wounds monitoring, to sweat monitoring of athletes to check their performance, 
or even a wearable UV patch, which basically senses how much UV you've received in the day and then sends an alert to your phone when you've had enough sun for today. These are some examples of all of the cool things that graphene can be used for in healthcare applications. We're all really looking forward to see everything that you can come up with this week. <laughs>